Today I'm here to answer one of the most asked questions in the Hoi4 community. How can you get friends? Wait, no, that's that's not the right one. No, this is no, this is how can you survive as Ukraine against the Russians in Hoi4? Obviously for this we're gonna be using the most recent build of the Millennium Dawn mod, one of the most popular mods in the Hoi4 community. Link to this mod in the description below. Now as you can see we have two start dates here. We have the 2000 start date which is the recommended one since you get to play as Ukraine from earlier rather than later and you get to experience the entire post-Soviet Ukrainian corruption cluster schnitzel that that is still around in Ukraine in 2023 but it's to a less extent today and then we also have the 2017 uh, start date this is outdated though they haven't uh, worked on it anymore but that being said the 2017 date is in fact still playable and since this is a little bit more accurate and more similar to today's version of Ukraine we're gonna click for the 2017 one it is gonna be a little bit tougher going for the 2000 Ukraine would have been a lot easier but no we're, we're taking the hard approach here since we we already have uh, parts of our country either annexed by the Russians or kind of annexed by the Russians. Not officially yet, I guess, but future years are going to make it very officially, aren't it? Now, of course, as the Ukrainians, we have our own issues, like we are a multi-ethnic state. As most of you know, Ukraine is a multitude of ethnicities. It is mostly Ukrainians, but then there's some Russians as well. Romanians in the Kernowitz area, as well as the Ismail. Hungarians as well by the border with Hungary. Slovakians, a little bit of Poles and a sprinkle of Romani all around that country. It's, it's quite a few sprinkles of that. They also have the kleptocracy modifier because the Ukrainian government's currently bogged down in its kleptocracy. High ranks are corrupted and use their power to exploit the people and the natural resources of their territory to extend their wealth and political power. Well, um, yeah, that's that's still happening. It's, it's not just in Ukraine, to be fair. It's in Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, Romania. It's happening all over the former Eastern Bloc, unfortunately. It's really a staple of Eastern Europe by now. We got a few more modifiers here. The most important one, in my opinion, would be the divide between East and West. If we start with the 2000 start date, that would be us moving towards the East. But because we started with 2017, we are moving towards the West. After the 2014 Maidan, the government of Ukraine started approaching the West and trying to integrate with the greater European continent. And it has gone a long way since. Ukraine has seen quite a few developments and despite the recent war with Russia I would say that Ukraine is still better than it was in 2000 but that's just my opinion though of course it's totally my opinion doesn't mean I'm right doesn't mean I'm wrong let's start this out and see how we're gonna play it because I have a strong suspicion that uh, we might actually lose this particular engagement all right let's see how many units we have we have 42 divisions not bad not bad not bad Let's separate our uh, mechanized from our infantry and just figure out what exactly is happening here. Not gonna lie, we do have quite a lot of tank and mechanized brigades, so it's not as bad as I expected it to be. We do need to standardize our army a little bit more, however. Now, before we uh, handle our army situation, let's check our national focuses. Of course, the Ukraine does get its own national focus in this mod. We got foreign policy initiative here for 70 days. Oh my god, I'm, I, I, I'm not a fan of the 70 days uh, national focuses. I'm so used to mods that add like 7, 35 days national focuses. They do have some 49 days, 49 days around here. So we're probably going to rush for some of those first. We want to go down the strong republic uh, path, I assume. Because we want to have Mr. Zelensky in charge of our country. He seems to be knowing what he's doing. There's a lot of decisions also we have here. Petro Poroshenko can retire as a leader. It's going to cost 100 political power. But we're getting 3.89 per day, which is an insanely high amount. So let's see. Hold new extraordinary elections not not gonna bother with any of this I think the political stuff I'm not gonna touch too much right now instead I might touch some of the stuff down below here let's check what we have for our national statistics internal factions we got Orthodox Christianity as our religion right now wow there's actually a lot of religions you can choose in this mod I haven't played with Millennium Dawn in a while I'll be honest but I used to play this a lot back in the day before I even started the YouTube channel I remember playing as Romania playing as Germany a lot and uh, my favorite runs were just doing
doing Millennium Dawn as uh, Germany. If you guys want to see something like that, let me know in the comments. If we get, say, 4,000 likes in this video, I will do a Germany run for 2,000 as uh, in Millennium Dawn, and then maybe I'll conquer all of Europe as them. You never know what happens. It's a very different situation for the Germans in Millennium Dawn. It's not like 1936 or 39 here, you know? How many uh, research slots we got? Two. Okay, we got to make good use of those. Let's go back here for a second. We got stagnation. We could change over to a stable growth. Cost to upgrade is going to be $29 billion. We also have a rampant corruption. That is extremely accurate right there. So, uh, yeah. We could go down to crippling corruption. What would be the benefit for going down this path, though? That is the actual question. Tax. Everything is worse here. If you go down crippling corruption. How about unrestrained corruption? That actually makes things a little bit better. It costs 750 political power. That's literally all of our political power, bro. Oh, that is not Gucci. That is really not Gucci. Looks like inefficient government, oligarchs, and kleptocracy are affecting this. So we're going to need to get rid of inefficient government, I think, and the other modifiers if we can. International bankers seems like actually decent. We're getting interest rate reduction and no bonuses aside from that. Farmers, opinion of the farmers is 40. So I guess they don't love us, but they don't hate us. And the oligarchs, which apparently are in our national statistics for some reason, have the same opinion. However, that actually does affect our country a little bit. We can also change government expenditures. Sizable military spending seems like uh, pretty decent right now. High police intelligence funding. Higher education focus is pretty good too. Basic health care. So that's actually better than the US uh, from that particular perspective, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Clearly, that's that's not better than the U.S.'s healthcare, guys. Come on. It's just a joke. Please don't assassinate me, CIA operatives that are listening to this video. I love you. We actually have some pretty good stuff, though, here. Like, the policy for service is mandatory service, which is really good. And we get attack and defense on core territory, which is all of our lands here, even the ones annexed by the Russians. Volunteer service for women. We can make it mandatory service for women. That's going to give us 1.6% more population. Local security. We can go for a little bit better there or officer military school officer military academy is not bad too however we need to get some companies in here so let's go for infantry weapon research or generic infantry weapon i'm gonna go for this one simply because i'm gonna need small arms like crazy for sure kmdb i never heard about this company maybe it's a very popular ukrainian company but I've never heard of it. Seems to be the overall best choice, I guess. Yeah, let's go for this again. Wow. Am I hiring these guys to do all of my shit? Antonov as well. Everybody knows about Antonov. They do have strategic bombing uh, bonuses, but we don't really have uh, any strategic bombers. Let's go for the generic aircraft uh, company and generic helicopter one. Not going to go for ship or submarine because we don't really need those. But I'm going to use the rest of uh, my uh, PP to get some of these decisions enacted. What do I need in order to join the European Union. Ukraine is an EU candidate member. How do I become an EU candidate member? How? Tell me. I need to know this. EU tutorial. Show this system. E oh, that sounds complicated. I'm not going to read through that. Fuck that. Open Blackwater units. Blackwater was an American private military company founded on December 26, 1996 by former Navy SEAL Eric Prince. Blackwater and his predecessors provide security, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. Hire Blackwater light infantry. US's opinion of Ukraine has to be one. Okay. It seems like we need to improve our relations with the United States then. Hello, you know those stats. I want to improve relaciones, improve yours maximus. Thank you very much. Love you. Our interest rate is 7.1 and we have a debt to GDP ratio of 81.7%. Holy shit, we're, we're massively in debt right now. This is 2017. What is the situation there today in that case, bro? All right, let's see what's going on here. Uh, Save the status quo. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's actually changing our kleptocracy with empowered kleptocracy. Eh? I also kind of want to see what uh, foreign policy does. So let's go down that path first and let's uh, consolidate our units here. We're going to assign some of these Chad Lords over here like uh, Alexander Lakota to make our front line with the Ruskies over there. And our Chad Lord armored brigades we're going to set up by the main border with the Russians. While these guys can take over a more defensive position. And I guess some of them break away and you can defend against the Crimean. Oh, we don't have anything to defend against. All right. Okay. How about actually? you know what no 
know. We're going to set him up against the um, Belarusian front because you never know. Belarus might actually attack us. That's that's plausible in my opinion. Oh, I love the technologies in Millennium Dawn. This was always one of my favorite parts. So we got different infantry equipment, of course. We got different sprites for each of these based on the country and such. I am, of course, going to go for this first because we need better infantry equipment. And maybe we can get some better artillery, maybe better anti-tank because I feel like the Russians are going to have really good tanks when the time comes, right? Yeah, we're going to need a lot of stuff. So let's start with uh, some small arms, one of those, and some man pads, maybe some tanks as well. The BDR DM2. Okay, that's not the main battle tank, is it? No. I think the main battle tank is the T-84 regular. Right. Let's also get some SU-17 fighter or fitter. Okay, that might, might, might be a little bit of a, a typo over there. We don't have many resources. We actually need quite a little bit of technology metals, as they call tungsten in here. So let's see who we can get the technology metal from. Maybe the Australians. Yeah, let's 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 get it from the Australians. How many construction factories have we got? We got a good. We got three factories. Oh my god, I forgot. I forgot that factories might be an issue. Um, okay. After this, we're gonna have to actually get some factories done. Let's start building some uh, civilian industries in this part of the country. Yeah, let's build them up in Kiev. The Ukraine civil war. The government failed the people. The country has reached a boiling point, and the people are fully in arms. They riot in the streets, they chant about their displeasure, and they're taking up arms to overthrow the government that has oppressed them. Russian speakers in Dobas have declared they're no longer going to be held back by the uh, Verkov Narada. Rebels have begun to fly their banners and announce new Russia will rise. Alright, well, we got the civil war with these bad boys, and the Quell the Rebellion is on track. Let's, uh... Let's quell the rebellion, I guess. Make sure we make a secondary front over here. Assign some of these units over there as well. Boom, shakalokos. At the same time, the fall of Aleppo just happened. I almost forgot the fact that uh, in 2017, Syria was still knee-deep in that civil war of theirs, which in 2023 is uh, kind of finished, I guess. Not truly finished but kind of finished oh wow you actually get a full screen now when you check the economic preview all right so we got a way of increasing tax rate corporate tax as well gdp is shown gdp per cap oh my god i am loving this mod dude i am genuinely loving the what they did with the mod I haven't played this in a few years you know and it's it's come a long way since then yeah look at my uh income deficit right here <laughs> i got minus 3.895 i'm guessing million <laughs> That is not good at all. I'm gonna increase my education level to the highest since it seems to give a lot of good bonuses. And I'm gonna do the same here. I'm actually going to increase my basic hospitals a little bit too. Also gonna move my embassy to Jerusalem just so I can uh, get that juicy 20 power projection. Why not? Oh my god, this man's got six attack and four defense. Okay, Sergi, you seem like you know what you're doing, brother. There was a little bit of a stalemate before er, between uh, the separatist regions and Ukraine. So that's basically the situation we have right now if we do decide to attack him what's gonna happen is russia is gonna join in and we're gonna have to fight the big boys so we got to make sure that we're ready for that war before we attack or before they attack us right the ukrainian volunteer corps was recently formed as one of the volunteer battalions created as a response to the rise of pro-russian separatism and russian intervention in the war in donbass we can make use of them in the conflict encourage them integrate them in the professional army or recruit for the support roles in covered operations Ooh, i feel like the integrating them in the professional army is is pretty decent. I'm gonna go for that. Oh, we seem to have a little bit of a border skirmish here. Okay, let's see who's gonna be the winner. Seems like uh, we might actually be the winner. Let's see. Enemy makes an unsuccessful attack. Obviously, obviously, we kicked their butts right there, boys. Volunteer fund donates artillery. I am loving these events. You get quite a few of them, and we also start with quite a little bit of a stockpile, by the way. We got a lot of T-64 BVs, T-72s, T-55s, T-80s. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I uh, I'm loving it. I'm actually loving it. AK-74s, we have quite a few extras as well. Recon tanks, we have BRDM-2s, self-propelled artillery, ATGMs, and so on. So we're not going to collapse anytime soon, not to fear. I also am really enjoying all of the new diplomatic interactions we have with different nations. Issue trade embargo. Yeah, we're not going to do that under the Germans, no worry. We could negotiate licenses, though, if we get a little bit more relations with them. Actually, let's see if we could do that with the US. We could, actually. Let's go. Let's do it. What could we request license? 
weapons from you bad boys now. Oh, you have a ton of equipment. Mark 17, small arms, 2015 already they have. Let's check what they got from uh, tanks. Maybe we should be able to produce some of their tanks. Wait, we're not gonna have the civilian factories to get it, but at least we can do it in the future, right? Say if we get the uh, M2 Bradley, they will accept. Yo, okay, buddy. But yeah, one uh, civilian factory is too expensive for me right now. We have only one that we're actually able to use, so... <laughs> Uh, it's no Gucci, boys. It's no Gucci. Oh, what is this? It shows the entire population of the European Union. Europeanism. What the F is that? And uh, the amount of breaches of EU values. Bulgaria's got a breach. Czech's got a breach. Estonia, Finland, France. Everybody's got a few breaches here. Oh my God. Greece has five breaches of European values. Oh, Greece. Why would you do it, Greece? And also, what did you do, Greece? <laughs> think we also need to uh, do the revolution of dignity. So this way we change over our ineffective government with pro-Ukraine government reform. So that's going to be a massive change since the ineffective government right now gives us the biggest issues. I probably should have started with this national focus now that I think about it, right? Also, I want to show you guys how awesome the ideological power system is for this mod. So you click over here and you can see you got communists, socialists, conservatives, liberals, autocrats like ourselves, monarchists or fundamentalists. And then you have the different uh, ideological values as I like to call them with the negatives and the positives for each of these. I feel like a lot of the stuff in Millennium Dawn, if they were ever introduced into the actual base game, it would make Poi 4 10 times better in my opinion. One really cool system that the Ukrainians have is the Ukrainian 2017 re Report on foreign influence so it shows the uh, nations that hold the highest amount of influence in our country we can influence this a little bit ourselves with some political power so we're gonna do that we're gonna attack the influence from Russia and we're gonna lower it by 5% here it's gonna take 60 days to do so and we also can combat foreign influence and increase our domestic influence by 2% at the same time so obviously we're gonna keep on doing these two of course we're also gonna set up a pro-western propaganda campaign which is gonna give us daily pro-west support by 0.10. It seems like these generals are scripted somehow. I keep getting different generals popping off here like a lot, like a lot, a lot. And I'm not sure how to handle this. Not gonna say much about it because, you know, it's just a little bit of a weird quirky thing. But I think it's time, boys. We're gonna retire Petro Poroshenko as the leader. And uh, now we have Mr. Viktor Yushchenko. Yeah, he's an oligarch. He's a humble oligarch, though. So uh, keep that in mind, okay? That makes a big difference, clearly. We're gonna retire him also also later down the line but until that point uh, we're trying to get rid of our corruption so we're gonna go down the NABU judiciary reform and police reform which is gonna lead us to the anti-corruption action which essentially um, you know it's it's gonna replace paralyzing corruption with crippling corruption which is way better clearly whilst we're doing all of this we will also be attacking these bad boys right next to us just to probe a little bit their defenses seems like we also got our first panzer expert so uh, we're clear Clearly in good hands here. Oh, hold up. Uh, investment offer from Russia. They propose to construct one infrastructure in Galicia, Volhynia. It will increase their influence in our country. So we're gonna have to say no for that. I would have liked some infrastructure, but not, not right now. Okay, maybe in the future. Oh, wait. So found the NABU replaces paralyzing corruption with crippling one. So that means we're gonna go from crippling corruption to whatever is the next one then? I hope so. Hold up second. The Iranian civil war. Okay, this definitely did not happen in our timeline. So uh, I feel like we've already diverged from the actual timeline. We have the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan against Afghanistan. That's accurate. That's actually accurate. That's the Taliban, right? But then <laughs> Islamic Republic against revolutionary Iran. Uh, I don't think that's actually happened, has it? I, I think I would have learned about that by now. So I guess not everything is actually uh, on point, obviously. Like the fact that Ismail's got a ton of cores. Romanian one makes sense, but then Nova Russia is a core, Donetsk PR is a core, and Luhansk PR is a core. That makes no sense to me. No sense. In fact, Donetsk and Luhansk having cores over half of Ukraine is just weird as schnapps, bro. Like, what the hell is this going on? I'm also gonna make a brand new unit of uh, Chad Ukrainian divisions here. We're gonna, we're gonna make this a little bit more interesting. Spice it out with some mixture of uh, light infantry and special 
special operations. We don't have the military experience though for that now. Maybe I'll just start with the extra support companies first. We've got some artillery batteries. We're gonna add one up there. Actually, let's also add engineer companies since we can, right? Yep, there you go. Chad Ukrainians are on the way, boys. Oh boy, national debt is crippling right here. We have a few options. Ask debt bailout from Russia, from Poland, from the IMF, or from our neighbor Romania. <laughs> Oh god, yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. Whew, if anything, we might as well shake hands and, and, and have the same amount of debt as the Romanians. Hey, would you look at that, boys? Afghanistan won the war against the Taliban, so uh, for them, at least, this is the good outcome, I guess, right? Unsurprisingly, the leader of Afghanistan is still Mr. Mohammed Ashraf Ghani, which in our timeline is probably hiding somewhere from the Taliban and likely never gonna be setting foot in Afghanistan again, is he? The war is still raging, though, between the Islamic Republic and revolutionary Iran. So uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on, on this one to see what happens. We also just started researching the uh, MiG-23 flogger. <laughs> this is a 1965 airplane, guys. Um, where it's gonna take us a while to reach uh, modern standards, that's for sure when it comes to our airplanes. And I feel like Russia might have a few more than us. Let's see what our intel is telling us right now. They've got somewhere between 1.3 to 2.3 thousand planes, yeah. Yeah, okay. Whew, that's, uh, that's quite a few planes right there. We, on the other hand, have 205 helicopters and roughly around... Whoa, what? We actually have quite a few planes also. What the F? Hold on a second here. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm a little bit surprised with the amount of planes that we have. In a good way. In a really, really good way. Let's uh, exercise these boys. Let's get them ready, actually, because the war is gonna be around the corner, right? All right, boys, we researched a brand new research slot, so now we have uh, three of them, and that means we're gonna catch up with technology a lot faster. I'm gonna do next some production efficiency cap and factory output. I feel like we need to increase the amount of factory output we have by quite a little bit if we were to keep up with the industrial output of the Russian Empire. Well, the Ru Russia, Russia. I gotta say though, I'm gonna go down the uh, obvious uh, historical path, I guess you could say. But the truth is that there's a lot of different branches we could do as Ukraine here. Like a strong nation might be in the future, a future video, not today's video, but I would would love to see what happens if we go down the uh, strong nation or even strong state the path if you know what I mean also here's a proper question guys why on earth did the Americans attack Mozambique There's an American war of aggression on Mozambique out of all... I mean, why? That is so freaking random. Okay, now I see who's leading the US. Okay, I mean, guess it's not as random as I initially expected it to be. But then again, yeah, no, that's still pretty freaking random. <laughs> I guess the AI works in mysterious ways, right? Some tax cuts around Mozambique, perhaps? Okay, we might have a chance at fixing our crippling debt here, but the IMF demands privatization of ports, and that would remove 98 billion, but it would also remove one naval yard in Odessa. I think I'm gonna accept it. Here's why. I don't actually care about the naval bit of uh, this particular campaign, since, let's face it, I got no actual chance of actually providing any sort of naval competence in the war to come, right? And 98 is not too bad. We still have 898, 93 to go. So, uh, yeah, I feel like I'm not gonna be, um, uh, ever financially secure in this particular run, am I? We might not be super ready for this, uh, but I decided it's time that we start poking the bear and asking them to give back Crimea. <laughs> oh, this is gonna end badly, isn't it? This, this is gonna end really badly, isn't it? I don't have anyone supporting me right now, so maybe I really should have waited with that the national focus. All right, boys, now, <laughs> before we do get completely screwed over by the Russians, though, we do have a choice here to join the European Union because as we are an EU candidate member now and we've got less than three EU values, breaches, and we're at peace now right so european union here we go ukraine has just joined the european union holy mother boy i cannot believe this just happened right now it must have something to do with the fact that we've been focusing all of our pee, -pee on fighting corruption and we are now at widespread corruption compared to the paralyzing one that we started this campaign with now we got some pro-european campaigns euro skepticism campaigns or yeah okay we're gonna go for pro-european ones actually Actually, no, I'm not gonna do none of this because this costs money and I cannot afford it. We have the European Parliament here. Oh, that is so cool. You see like Parliament members and stuff? That is so freaking cool. Moderate Islamists. Oh, okay. We have that in the 
parliament, apparently. That's cool. Communist, too. The fascist. Okay. Well, that's uh, totally not scary. Totally not scary. A lot of different new things have opened up here. EU Council voting prediction. Disable AI voting. Oh, okay. So this is like you can interact with this to make the AI do certain things. Interesting. Wow, that is so many different EU stuff now. Adopt EU law. This is going to give us charter of fundamental rights of the European Union. Boom. Let's go. We adopted European Union law and we're poking the bear. Let's see what happens right after, boys. All right. We've successfully poked the bear and uh, we've also got our first voting result here and it says the individual voting and everything wow dude the amount of scripting that went into this mod is just absolutely mind-blowing to me whoa hold on a second here boys we are the owner and control of crime is this because we joined the european union i feel like this is because we joined the european union otherwise there's no shot they would have accepted this well whatever the case we got crimea back boys so i guess we're back in business now <laughs> We also went up to five construction factories. Way better than the one that we started with, isn't it? I mean, kind of better. Anyway. Oh, US granted us 200 billion in bailout money. Oh my lord. This is why we allied with the US boys. This is why we're aligning with them. They're so generous. 200 billion, just like that, without any sort of, you know, any sort of problems caused by that later down the line, right? They're, they don't want nothing from us, right guys? Right, guys? You sure about that? You sure about that? Wait up. Did uh did Moldova just join the European Union? I think they did. <laughs> they did. Oh my god. I have to say that the bonuses you get from the EU is pretty decent too. Look at this. We're actually almost even with our income compared to uh our expenditure. It's, the situation is definitely improving in our country, safe to say. If we don't get attacked in the next couple of years, we might actually get back on track, right? And yet another bailout. This time from our friends over in Spain. I'm even thinking we might be able to pay off our debt considering I've been taxing the snaps out of people. It's the worst part of the game. Oh, it's what? Taxes. We're getting 4.2 billion from income alone and oh my god for the first time ever we actually have an income that is not a deficit oh my lord see this is how you fix ukraine in case you're wondering you just tax everybody like crazy okay why is joe rogan in charge of the country right now <laughs> this guy klim sewick is clearly joe rogan's double ganger not even joking right now we're being literally ruled by joe rogan guys what the snaps <laughs> so we've actually gained enough progress Progress on the war to seize one of the oblasts. I'm gonna seize the Donetsk oblast, which is the biggest in my opinion. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna have to wait for nine days. If that works, that is literally the easiest way to win the war, man. <laughs> We're not even fighting the Russians then. We're literally not even fighting the Russians if that's the case. And that begs the question, why doesn't Ukraine just click a button and seize the oblast? Am I right here? Also, I'm pretty sure this is what the actual, um, what you might call it, uh, borders of uh, Luhansk and Donetsk are right now as as far as I know. I think they have uh, pulled back all the way to the city of Donetsk by this point. And prior to Russia's involvement, uh, all of this area here was taken as well. So let's try and push towards getting that area then. I think the moment's here for us to seize the rest of the uh, Luhansk Oblast and then uh, see what we do about the cities of Luhansk and Donetsk after, because I'm pretty sure we're going to struggle taking those. Now we've reached the point where essentially <laughs> we have pre-2022 borders and we like likely will end up in the same situation as um modern Ukraine faces but we did manage to get ourselves a nice big alliance with everybody in the Baltic so it's likely not going to be the same outcome plus we got Crimea so we got that going for us too the truth is though guys that playing this out really made me realize that a lot of other maybe EU4 players maybe Hoi4 players maybe Paradox players are fighting on both the Ukrainian and the Russian side of the war and unfortunately I don't see this war coming to an end anytime soon so I think it would be only fitting for me to just leave this open-ended and I do want to say that no matter which side you're on, remember that we're all humans at the end of the day. And this is not about Ukrainians versus Russians. This is about two governments that are fighting each other or, well, multiple governments that are fighting each other. And whatever the outcome of the war, the suffering is going to be carried out by the soldiers on the front, the civilians that have had their houses destroyed and have had to live through absolutely insane times that I don't think anybody was expecting to see within Europe and 
the 21st century really so my heart goes out to everybody that's been affected by this war both in ukraine and russia and and other countries that have been as consequence affected because of the grain not reaching their countries and so on and i really do hope that we get a resolution for this war sooner rather than later and hey if you enjoy this video i really hope you check out my other germany video for hoi 4 and I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. If anybody else would like to also support me, you will find the links in the description.